Welcome back. Okay, in the last video, we talked about what is the high-level goal of balance model reduction, which is to find some coordinate transformation from a high-dimensional state x to a low-dimensional state x tilde that captures the most uh, input-output dynamics from u to y, because that's all I really care about for control, because I can affect u and I can measure y. Now, before we get into finding this, what this, we're going to call this the balancing transformation. We're going to, this, this is a coordinate transformation that um, balances controllability with observability. Before we get into that, I have to tell you how dynamical systems, how these linear state space models change under a change of coordinates. So what we're going to do essentially is we're going to look at what happens um, x equals I'm going to draw this as a big square matrix, T times Z. So this is a, a reduced state X tilde. First, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens just if I do some coordinate transformation T. So this is an invertible matrix T that all it does is just changes my X coordinates to Z coordinates or vice versa. We're going to see what happens when we what happens to these dynamics when we do this coordinate transformation. And then we're going to pick a very, very special T that balances, that takes my controllability Gramian and my observability Gramian. And under this coordinate transformation, we're going to find that there are special coordinate transformations that make those Gramians equal and diagonal. So I can basically find a coordinate transformation. I'm going to draw this. This is a super important picture. So maybe I have a controllability Gramian. Uh, I'm going to draw this as an ellipsoid in uh, state space. So this is my most controllable direction. That's my least controllable direction. Maybe I have um, an observability Gramian like this, okay, pointing in a slightly different. So this is, let's say, O, B, S, V. This is Gramian observable. This is, um, let's call this C, T, R, B. This is my WC Gramian, okay? Maybe that isn't going to come through. Uh, WC, my controllability Gramian. Then what's really amazing is that there exists a coordinate transformation T, a special one. Out of all of the possible invertible matrices T, there's a very special one that essentially changes the coordinates so that both of these Gramians are equal to this pink Gramian. And then this becomes, in these new coordinates, WC equals WO equals a diagonal matrix sigma. And this diagonal matrix is ordered from most controllable and observable to least controllable and observable. And this gives me a very clear way of truncating. If I only want you know, one state or two states, I pick the directions that are most jointly controllable and observable. So in this case, I would pick this direction because that is the most controllable and observable direction and I would disregard this direction. Uh, and so we're going to find that special T matrix. We're then going to pick a subset of those columns and we're going to call that Psi. That'll be our balancing transformation. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're basically going to find a special coordinate transformation that makes my controllability and observability Gramians equal and diagonal. That's going to give me a hierarchy of my state space in terms of the most jointly controllable and observable states to my least jointly controllable and observable states, so from highest to lowest. And that gives me an easy way of drawing a line and saying if I want to keep five modes, if I want a five-dimensional representation that most captures the controllability and observability, I can just pick the first five columns of T, and that's my balancing transformation. Okay, that's where it's going. Right now, I'm going to tell you how this dynamical system and how these Gramians change under a coordinate transformation T. So if this was a little fast, we're going to go back through this. We're actually going to code this up and visualize it in MATLAB, and we're going to go through finding that coordinate transformation T that does this. It's very related to eigen decompositions, so it's like eigenvectors. T is essentially going to be a fancy set of eigenvectors. Okay, super simple, basic concept. What we're going to do is we're going to write this dynamical system in terms of a new variable, Z, where x equals t z. Okay, so what, is, what does this actually do? Okay, so x dot is t times z dot, right? So essentially, I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to basically, every time I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a tz. Super simple. So I'm going to say um, t z dot equals a times t z plus b 
u. And y is going to equal c times tz. This is really simple. I literally just took this, and every time I saw an x, I plugged in a tz. I took the time derivative, and t is a constant, so it doesn't get a dot, but z is a variable, it gets a dot. Okay, so tz dot. Now, remember, this is a full coordinate transformation. This is a big invertible matrix. It's an n by n matrix t. So we're going to left uh, multiply by t inverse to get just my z dot equations. So now what I'm going to get is um, z dot equals t inverse a t z plus t inverse b u. And y isn't going to change. It's just c t z. And so now what's cool about this is these, um, these essentially give me my new a, B, and C matrices in my Z coordinates. So in my Z coordinates, this is my A matrix, this is my B matrix, and this is my C matrix. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call those hats. I'm going to say any A, B, and C matrix in Z coordinates are A hat, B hat, and, and C hat. So finally, I'm going to say, uh, let's group these. This is one set of equations, two sets of equations. Z dot is A hat, Z plus b hat u, and y equals c hat z, where a hat is just t inverse at, b hat is t inverse b, and c hat is c times t. Okay, um, That's pretty simple. Okay, Now, if the columns of t are orthonormal, then t inverse would be a t transpose. And this t inverse would be a t transpose. So if I had a very special transformation t where it was not only invertible, but the columns are orthonormal, meaning that the inner product of any two columns is equal to 0, unless that inner product is that column with itself, then this inverse is even easier than t inverse. It would just be t transpose. Okay, So that's a nice thing that you can do with these coordinate transformations. Okay. So this is really, really simple. I can just do a change of coordinates with an invertible t. Let's make a little note. This is important. This is invertible, OK? Because it's a big square matrix. It's a, a real coordinate transformation. It's not a truncated state. If I had this coordinate transformation t, then I can write my dynamics in these new z coordinates uh, pretty simply in terms of a, b, c, and t. Okay. Now, what I want to tell you, what's really important is understanding not only how this affects the dynamics, but how this affects the Gramians. This is the most important part, okay? because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to design a very special T that does this, that takes these Gramians and makes them equal, uh, equal and diagonal. Okay? So I'm going to do my best attempt at trying to write down what all these Gramians are here. Um, and it's a little bit you know, involved. So <laughs> this is going to be some math. So bear with me. So what I want to do is I want to write down what is the Gramian in these coordinates, in my z and hat coordinate system. And again, you can go back to the controllability boot camp, uh, the control boot camp, and remember what is this uh, wc. So I'm going to say wc hat. I should have probably called this a hat. Let's call this hat, hat. Right, we're going to find this new coordinate transform that makes my hats uh, do a special thing. OK, so what is my controllability Gramian? I think it's an integral from time 0 to time infinity of integral from time 0 to time infinity of, OK, I'm cheating a little, of e to the a tau b B, OK, I'm going to do star. That means complex conjugate transpose. So if I happen to have complex valued dynamics, which happens in quantum mechanics, this is the complex conjugate transpose. For any real valued dynamics, this is just a transpose. I want you to, OK, let's, let's put a note. Star equals uh, complex conjugate transpose. So for all real systems, this is just a transpose times e to the a complex conjugate transpose tau d tau. OK, and remember, these are hat variables. This is a hat, b hat, b hat, a hat. OK, 
remember what I'm trying to do. I have dynamics. Those dynamics have controllability and observability gramians. I want to know how do the dynamics change in a new coordinate system and how do the gramians change in a new coordinate system. That's all we're going to do right now. Then we're going to design that coordinate transformation to have good properties. So this is the controllability gramian in my a hat, b hat, c hat coordinates. Okay. Now what we get to do is expand a hat is really t inverse a t and b hat is t inverse b. This is going to get a little messy. Whew. All right, let's try it. Uh, I'm going to give myself a little more room here. This is an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the t inverse a t tau. Okay, b hat is t inverse b. Okay, b hat transpose is b hat transpose is uh, b transpose t inverse transpose. Okay, this is going to be a b transpose t inverse transpose. I'm going to just do minus star. But you're going to have to remember that is literally t inverse transposed. I just invented this. Well, I didn't invent it, but this is just notation. This means t inverse transposed. Uh, and then I need my e to the t inverse a t tau d tau. Blah. Not great. Not terrible either. Okay, that is what my controllability gramian in z coordinates looks like in terms of my original a, b, c, and t matrices. Now the cool thing is I can pop because I'm going to assume that this is somehow kind of an eigenvector or an orthogonal I'm going to assume that this, this, this t inverse, I can pop out of this exponential, which I can. So I'm going to pop out my t inverse on both sides of everything. So I'm going to pop my t inverse. I'm going to have my integral. I'm going to get integral 0 to infinity. e to the a tau times the matrix t times t inverse, those cancel, times b, b star, t minus star, t minus 1, e to the a tau, uh, this should have been a star up here, you guys should be catching me on this, a star, big T, d tau. Okay, it sounds like a bunch of math, but all I did was I popped the t's and t inverses out of the exponentials, and these guys cancel, and these guys cancel. And when those cancel, what's really cool, okay, I, I dropped a t here. What's really cool about this is that this is a constant. T inverse is a constant matrix. This T on the outside is a constant. So I can bring those outside of the integral. And all that's left is an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the at, b, b star, e to the a star t. That's my controllability gramian in my original coordinates. That's original wc. So this equals T inverse wc t. If I didn't mess anything up, what this means is that when I do a coordinate transformation with this t matrix, my new controllability gramian is simply t inverse times my old controllability gramian and my original x coordinates times t. That's a pretty useful, uh, useful to know. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a good t that takes my original wc and makes it equal to wo and equal to a diagonal matrix. That's what we're going to do. I should probably also tell you what wo does. Um, just this is an exercise. You can just do this yourself at home. Uh, w o hat is going to equal t star w o uh, t. Okay, and this was um, is this right? T inverse w c t. Uh, t inverse, I think this was supposed to be a t minus star, and I think this is a t minus star, and this is a minus star. Let me see about that and get back to you. Okay, big picture, we have dynamics, we're doing a coordinate transformation, we want to know how the dynamics change and how the uh, controllability and observability gramians change. Next time we're going to design this T matrix specifically so that these gramians have beneficial properties. Okay, thank you.